So uh, I was wondering, if this young man does not have money to go to the washroom, what does he do? So I came out to, I came to realize sometime most of them they actually go to the to the bushes. They have no alternative. That's a routine. They find uh, they find a private place. They go do their business out there. They go for the long call, the short call in the bushes. You know, sometimes they can lack a single cent to go pay for uh, a ten shilling uh, ten shillings to go pay for uh, what do you call this. Uh, Go pay for, uh, for for the bathroom, for the washroom. I mean, for the for the toilet. So they can't afford that. So they go there, go to the bushes to do their business. So that's how they survive. And most houses in uh, in the ghetto, that's the same same situation. You know, ghetto houses are temporary housing. Anytime the government can just come and decide, well. This is a, is a is an illegal space, so we want you out right now. So most places they don't have infrastructure, they don't have a well planned out uh, water system, they don't have a toilet system or uh, a sewerage system. So what they do, the water point is far off from the houses. The toilets and the bathroom are far off from the houses. So for you to use the bathroom. In the middle of the night, either you can use a bucket in your house <laughs> or you decide to hold it up until the right time comes. So that's what happens. So um, with all these situations, you will still find this young man, this young person, appreciating the kind of, uh, um, of help someone offers. So someone can say... Uh, Okay, how much did you say the, the the simple shanty house costs? A ten feet by twelve feet house costs that will house six or seven or sometimes ten people. You know how much does it cost? Yeah, twenty to thirty dollars. Twenty to thirty dollars. So um, yeah, take this. Go and pay them off. Pay pay it off and uh, let them say. You know they don't understand the magnitude. What is the age range of of these young people that find themselves in the situations where you're helping them in these housing situations? Um, So I can say the age ranges from around seven years of age to around 22. And uh, the reason I'm saying 22, it's because of the fact that uh, there's a mortality rate for persons living in the streets. And uh, what I came to realize, for someone to go beyond the age of 20, it's an advantage for that person. It's a, it's a bonus year for that person because they rarely pass 20 years. They rarely do, really. Because uh, you find most of them die before they get to the age of 20. And um, the same same age is, uh, uh, lack of a better word, is, uh, uh, how can I put it? Mm. It is a tricky kind of year whereby guys tend to die mostly, as I can say. That's when they, they tend to die most because uh, they engage in different kind of vices. That's when most of them give up on life. That's when most of them uh, uh, want to experiment stuff, you know. So some of them can join gangs because uh, some of them transit from being beggars now to be de- being dependent because no one wants to help them because they're adults. Um, anyone above 18 years is an adult. So uh, someone will say, I want to, I cannot help you. You're a big man. And uh, so go find go find some something to do as a man. So some of them get frustrated with all this transition from childhood to adulthood. So uh, you'll find some of them going to peddle drugs, going to um, engage in some um, in robbery with violence. And um, in the midst of all this, uh, they caught up in a crossfire with the police. And they, they, they perish 
through through uh through this all. So uh, that's what happens. So any person above the age of twenty or twenty one, that's a bonus age. What is what do you see as pathways out of this type of poverty? What do you see as pathways out of this type of a circumstance? Because even, yes, to provide housing for a month or for two years becomes a way of stabilizing someone's living situation or their shelter situation. But how yeah. does it help someone? Mm. What's the next step? How how can someone progress beyond yeah. mm-hmm. to some other level of thriving and existence and living? Yeah. So uh, that's a good question, and uh, the best way I know how to answer that question is uh, very simple. Number one, everyone needs security. And uh, if you have security, chances are, uh, uh, chances are for you to succeed are high. So the first thing that I believe is key uh, that will help uh, progression or uh, uh, promise a better future for these young men and women is for starters get a housing for them. Shelter gives security. You know, if someone is inside, uh, inside, uh, um, inside a house, they're safe from so many things. Safe from diseases, safe from, uh, from, uh, from any kind of, uh, any, any kind of violence that might break out where someone is outside. You know, you're safe inside. There's no sense of security when you're inside a house. So having a house brings a sense of security. Will bring a sense of belonging, and uh, will help them think of other things other than housing. So if one stress is uh, is is uh, is out of the picture, there'll be some sort of progression in the life of this person's person living in the street. So. What I'm trying to say is, to say is, housing will help as a as a as, as a start. Housing will help them be relaxed and will give them a sense of security. The second thing that uh, that that uh, I feel is key is to form some kind of relationship with these persons living in the streets. The same way I normally handle the, the situation, and I've seen this, the effectiveness of uh, of, of it. When I, whenever I go to uh, my regular visits in the streets, I normally tell uh, the group of, of young men or young women I meet that they should take me as a brother. They should take me as a big brother. They should take me as a father. You know, so them looking at me or looking up to me as a brother, as a father, as, um, as a friend, they tend to open up to me whenever they have an issue. Kids living in the streets need security. And the best way to give them security is by offering them housing. And number two, they need for uh, someone to develop or establish friendship, establish a relationship with them so that they can understand they are not an outcast. They are loved. They are appreciated by you, by me, by any other person so that it can bring about change. So what would be your vision? What do, what would this look like three years from now? What would be your wish list? So the long-term vision is to establish a way or to find a way to uh, to uh, provide housing units for persons living in the streets. And number two is to meet the healthcare needs. So my two major visions is to find ways to establish a house or housing units for persons living in the streets and help them with healthcare. So by healthcare, I mean there's a way I'm trying to look at it, or there's a way I planned it out, or it's in my mind that I wrote it down. 
in my in my in my in my um, in my vision book. Um, when it comes to healthcare, the kind of thing that I see is in collaboration with different kind of stakeholders or persons who are, are of interest or or um, or uh, the different kind of partners. I'm trying to look at establishing uh, mobile clinics where they can the purpose persons living in the streets can easily access medical healthcare because healthcare is one of the of the of the, of the issues that um, over the years the made observation is lacking for persons living in the streets because uh, I have come across so many persons living in the streets dying because of lack of healthcare. Because I remember a scenario whereby I used to run a program in 2015. We had a boy who uh, used to come to a program. We used to call it uh, the Street Children Development Program. That program was very effective. So we used to meet this young man. And uh, when we were meeting the, ma- the, the young boy, the day, he was a very vibrant guy. He was a comedian. He was very funny. So there's a day he, we noticed that he was uh, shying off. He was too silent. And uh, a few days later, he started shivering. When we used to ask him, what's, what's, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Tell, talk to us. Talk to us. He never used to, to, to open up, really. He, he didn't open up. So when uh, when I, uh, one, one of those fine days, I, I, I approached him and forcefully asked him, tell me exactly what's wrong with you because we need to help you and we cannot help you and we, if we know, we don't know the kind of situation. When, uh, when someone, uh, I think I accidentally touched his, uh, his rib, so he screamed. So when I opened the clothes, I found a very big panther on the rib. And uh, coming to, to, to realize or to know the, the kind of story behind the, the puncture on the rib that extended to, to the stomach was that he engaged into a fight. And after fighting with uh, some, some, some older people living in the streets, he was stabbed with a knife. So uh, he did not tell anyone about it. So he was trying to nurse his wound, but he did not do a great job about it because... The, the wound was infected. There was um, there were worms coming out of that particular wound. Oh. So I was really disturbed about this particular situation or scenario. So immediately we rushed him to one of the local hospitals. He was rejected because it's, we were saying, my goodness, why are you bringing him now? You know, it was a public hospital. I won't mention names. Why are you bringing him now? So uh, we begged with them and they told them, please take him in. Do the best you can. At least do something. Unfortunately, the, the next day that boy perished, he passed away. So what happened? The, the, the next thing that happened was that uh, his friends organized for his funeral. Uh, they gave him a decent send off, and uh, that really made me think about healthcare as a whole in the streets as a as a solution to provide for persons living in the streets because. In most times, in most cases, in most, uh, most, most of the time, I, I have interacted with persons living in the street. They normally tell me the same, same kind of street or of, of, uh, situation or scenario all through in different kind of locations or bases. They normally tell me whenever they go to, the, to, to a hospital to get medical attention, they are rejected because of the kind of uh, outfit they have. They, they, they ought to be kind of dirty, you know. The greasy kind of clothes and uh, it's it's muddy or, or dusty or uh, you know they have uh, black patches all over themselves. They are not well kept. Sometimes they can be stinky. So most hospitals will re- will deny them access to medical care. So having a medical clinic for the specific for them will actually help them access the immediate kind of care that they need. Could be a fast aid, or could be um, um, some random checkup. So those are my 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 uh, long term goals. So to establish a housing unit and to find a way to establish a healthcare center or clinic for them. Could be a, a physical location or a mobile clinic.
there are people out there that 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 want to help with something like this. Okay. And again, their gift mm -hmm. is the finances of it. Mm -hmm. There is a man right here in Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. He comes to mind now. He's the owner mm -hmm. of a huge pharmaceutical company. Multi-millionaire several, several times over. And is very much into investing into young people. And I don't know how... I don't know how this is going to connect, but... I just want to do my part. Wow. Yeah. What is your connection with, or what is your thought with, with, with government and like, how, I don't even know how that would be navigated, you know, like. Mm. Mm. So, uh, I can say that, uh, the government, um, is really trying to help the situation, but I think, uh, they are kind of overwhelmed because they don't have, uh, uh, uh people who have the passion for this, you know, so some people who are tasked with this particular, uh, kind of, uh, situation, they're qualified on paper, but they know, don't have passion for this. So they will tend to not to have uh, the drive, the passion, or uh, give this situation a priority. So they will think of the traditional ways of doing things. Hmm. Like I interacted with one of the agencies and they were, they were saying, we have allocated a very big space to, to build a children's center. So we were like, okay, you have land, you want to bring these kids to a particular center, don't you think that you are confining them in a place they will feel like uh, they're in, in, in incarcerated, like in jail? You know, because if you take someone in, uh, in a children's center, you'll have their own rules, and they have to abide by the rules, and they'll have restrictions. And uh, the reason as to why they're in the streets is because they want freedom. So you bring them from the streets to restrain them from uh, having their own kind of uh, say or uh, some sort of freedom will limit them. And uh, at the end of the day, it won't work. So uh, that's what happens. So they have a traditional way of doing things. And uh, sometimes... They won't agree to collaborate because, uh, sorry to say, but some of them want to benefit from the venture because it's a, they want to, to make it a business or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, they will want to stay there longer to show that they're doing stuff, but in reality, they're doing nothing, really. Because um, if... The country has laws in the constitution that govern the country about kids having access to healthcare, having access to education, having access to, to different kind of things. Come to think of it, they don't have a section that speaks about the homeless, street children, you know. They don't have a section in the constitution that speaks about that. So they are not recognized. No one knows they exist, but they do exist. There's no law governing persons living in the streets. So um, the government needs to come up with, with ways to think of implementing policies about persons living in the streets. But uh, one challenge is that 
there is no one particular politician that has a drive or passion for this. So there is a high likelihood it's never going to happen, which is sad. Lord, well, I can't take no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh, I can't take no more. I'm like, Lord, have yeah, mercy. You know, you know, for for uh, for the past few few years that I uh, I've dealt with them, uh, I've had some highs and lows. I remember there's a day I uh, I used to go in a specific base and uh, introduce myself and uh, tell them that you can take me or take me in as your brother. You know accept me as a brother and let's let's do life together you know so uh uh i remember in most cases or most instances you start building the friendship and the relation and uh, a few years down the line most of them die you know you know you know the kind of feeling you have when you like you, you, you lose your loved one that kind of feeling is what i felt over the years you're making you 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 making a connection with someone only least a few weeks or months down the line that person dies. There's a day I remember it used to mess me up. Every other day I wake up, I get some news, so-and-so passed away, so-and-so passed away. So it really used to mess me up big time. So um, um, it's not easy <laughs> to work in this, in this whole venture. It's, it's tough and uh, it's not for the faint hearted. And um, it takes a big heart for someone to to do what I do because it's by the grace of God I can do what I do. Having a big heart enough, a, a heart big enough to accommodate all these persons, you know. The same, same people who people uh, out there think they are unwanted the same kind of people who people perceive them as outcasts, you know, they don't want to associate with them, but they find a special place and I consider them as brother, as family, and I would want the best for them. I would want to see them succeed in life. I would want to see them advance in whichever way. So that's my heart. My heart beats. <laughs> Mm-hmm. How many people do you think you've lost? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. More than a hundred. A hundred of them. A hundred plus. Uh, yeah, more than a hundred. My God. Mm-hmm. And uh, so back back in the days, I used to get so emotional about it. I mean, you're just talking about waking up the one morning, you, you hear, hey, you know what? Five of your friends have gone. Gone where? They died, you know, they died. They passed away. Maybe they were shot by the police or they were... Mm, were shot by the police, so they were involved in a in a mob justice. They were beaten by a by, by a gang of people. You know, there were some clashes with their friends or their rival group, or there was a misunderstanding, and so one of them stabbed the other and then ran away. Oh my goodness! So I have seen it all. I think that's deep. Yeah. Oh, that's deep. No, that's deep. I agree. My Lord. Yeah. I'm determined to be home all day today. I'm I'll probably <clears throat> be home. I, I I need to get this I need to get this done. Okay. The burden is on me. 
Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the burden, Lord. Because I just, I'm like, it's heavy. It's heavy. Because I'm just like, Lord. I just. Yeah. <clears throat> I just, I just, I just want to do my part. Whatever the Lord wants me, I just want to do my part. <clears throat> um. So you know, and if it makes a difference and somebody has helped, oh my <clears throat> God, that's the thank you, Lord. I just, I don't want to half do this. I don't want to just. Hey, yeah, we went to Africa, and yeah, look at this. I got, I, I bought this souvenir. I got this. Oh, look at these pictures. <clears throat> we had a great time. No. <clears throat> It's 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 bigger than that. It's deeper than that. Yeah. It's deeper than that. Yeah. And for somebody, it's literally life and death. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um... I shall thank you for sharing. I thank you for taking the time to walk me mm-hmm. through some of this and walk me through some of your soul. Yeah. Um. I I I I just I don't even know what to say. I just I don't know. I do not know what to say. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> said we'll help someone someday and uh, someone will uh, get a fraction of my burden because uh, over the years I always try to to speak my, my burden to people so that they can do something. You know, I normally say that uh, you don't have to do so much. Just care and uh, show do something. Something even if it's um the least of the things that you can see the least in your list, you know, do something about it and uh, it will make a difference. So, um, if someone can just have a fraction of what I have, it will make a difference, a very big difference. That's my hope and desire. 